Hi, welcome back. Today I will be showing you how I build the Sherman Firefly from the Plastic Soldier Company. The model in general that I will be building today is the 172 20mm version containing three vehicles. From these you can either build the Firefly or the M4A4 variant of this tank. So let's have a look inside the box. As with all the Plastic Soldier Company miniatures, the sprues are packed with a load of detail. The sprues themselves are duplicated, so we get three sprues containing the upper hull, the coupler and turret sections, complete with variants in both hulls, the turrets and the guns, as well as hatch configurations along with the mantlets that the individual guns are mounted on. You also get some stowage including jerry cans and spare track sections along with the pintle mounted 50 caliber heavy machine gun. The Firefly itself though didn't usually carry this weapon as was the case with its hull mounted 30 caliber which was removed to make room for the larger caliber shells that were carried. The second set of sprues contain the track sections, the lower hull mug guards if required as seen on some variants of this tank with the extended mug guards along with the wheel sections showing the double VSS or vertical volute spring system with its offset roller. The tools that we will need for this project are a small pair of side cutters, a sharp scalpel or modelling knife, obviously some plastic cement, a small piece of sandpaper or even an emery board and a very fine drill. The drills that I'll be using this time are a 0.8mm, a 1mm and a 1.5mm diameter drill. We really should be looking at no larger than a 1.5mm drill. Inside the box itself as you open it up you will see the assembly diagrams. These allow you to identify by colour coding the individual variances on the Sherman Firefly or the M4A4. Quick assembly diagrams are also included which will allow you to assemble the wheel unit, the turret sub-assembly and the general assembly in total. It also allows you to see the finished model with the rear, front and side elevations allowing you to orientate and picture the finished model. Looking at the actual production of the model for a moment, the mould and flash lines are kept to a minimum and where possible every effort has been made to attach the finished figure or miniature to the sprue at a very low point, allowing for the mould line to be virtually invisible, which can easily be removed with a file, sharp knife or emery board. So all the pieces have been removed from the sprue now for the Firefly. The only part that I have not included in this build is the commander figure. Each set of sprues comes with a commander figure option. allows you to build an open, open hatch configuration with the commander figure. On this build I will however be doing a close hatch configuration. So the first part that we will build is the wheel unit sub-assembly. Identify obviously the parts which will be the wheels of tracks. They come in top and bottom pieces. Now the first thing that you need to identify on these tracks is the correct sides and orientation. They have some of the track sections spigots removed on the inner side of the track. This allows for orientation against the edge of the side of the tank once the wheel is assembly is, in, is attached. You also need to identify the track direction and the best way to look at this is to think of a U as opposed to an N. So you need the track sections to be forming a U shape which is obviously going 
in that direction. Once you've identified those, place them in order and obviously start your build. The wheel units have two small sections removed in a D shape which allows the drive wheels to be added and again these have a D shape peg allowing you to attach the section. A small amount of glue may be required on these just a dab in each hole not too much as it may cause overflow and spoil the finished miniature and then locate the D pegs and orientate into the subsections now with these what we need to make sure is that the teeth section go inside the track and that should leave you with a smooth run of the wheel on the outer side once you've got these small pieces orientated correctly the rest of the build will go forward quite quite quickly and easily and virtually snap together on these models and some of the tolerances on the fits are indeed an interference or a sliding fit which allows you to virtually clip them into position and hardly any glue would be required now the first track so obviously as we look at the front of the tack we shall turn this the right hand side the right hand side track we take looking for our U shape on the track run and we attach that likewise and what we need is just a couple of small dabs of glue on these running wheels very very minimal amounts again possibly around the edge section there and then we attach our bottom track like so the top section of this track then follows again looking for the broken sections to go on the inside and also for the shape of the track run that U shape as it's running forward small amount of glue again added to the drive wheel and the rear wheel only and also on the end of the tracks on the lower section again look for the broken track segments which need to go on the inside and obviously the U shape running to the front of the track to the front of the tank Offer those sections up to each other, a line, you may need to clamp at this point and again at this point and because of the only slight gap that will be shown here a small amount of putty may be required once dry. Once that is complete repeat with the opposite side of the track. And so on to the turret and gun assembly. Locate your pieces including the upper turret, the lower turret, the gun mantle sections and the gun. The gun has a small mould line, the drum barrel has a small mould line across it. This can be removed prior to assembly with a very sharp knife. It's very very minimal and if anything the only mould line I have actually found on this model. Glue needs to be applied to the lugs which are inside the turret mounts this allows the inner gun mantle to rest against them and also dry fit to locate your positions and on this instance we need to apply glue along this section and the inside section of the turret assemble the pieces and again orientate your gun mantle looking at the picture to, to see the larger section at the top of the gun mantle so it should be mounted like so apply this from the inside
and then apply your upper turret to your lower turret sections. You may wish to clamp this section of the miniature whilst drying. Place that to one side. Whilst waiting for this section to go off to dry before applying the hatches, obviously you don't want any contacts and cement or glue on your fingers. You want to keep that away. So we'll allow that to dry before handling the more fiddly parts of the hatches. We'll move on to the general hull assembly, which is basically two piece and the front section including these separate rivets on the hull, on the bulkhead. There's also a small storage box and if need be any stowage but the stowage can be always added afterwards. Straightforward again, locate with the dry fit first to locate your glue points and looking at this now we need only apply glue to this section and possibly to the under section along here and very small amounts to these lugs you will see a gap there and prior to that this section attaches like so so we assemble with a glue or a cement along this edge and around here like so into position and there and you can hear the model clip together so always dry fit before applying your glue or your cement We shall apply a small amount of cement across the inner edge and likewise around the rear edge like so. And then this frontal section of the bulkhead will be applied to the lower hull. At this time now, we've already located our attachment points on this section, which are along this edge, along the front inner edge, and smaller dabs just on the lugs. Minimal, minimal amounts of cement required. Locate, and you can hear that model snap into place. Again you may wish to use rubber bands or clamps to hold into position and allow to dry. Back to the turret and at this instance now we just need to locate the outer mantle, orientate correctly with any diagrams or pictures and what we're looking for here again how we orientate this will be obviously I can see three little dents there, indentations, a small one there and this there. The gun itself, the barrel itself, locate the vent holes and just push into place a snap fit and interference fit on these two parts. We don't really need any contact cement along these edges what will happen is it will spill out of the model and if indeed it is contact cement may even melt the very fine detail so interference fit that's all we need on this model and likewise the barrel and gun set is interference fit this will allow some movement on the model we'll remove the gun section for this instance now while I show you the coupler and hatches the hatch Again you can orientate and what we're looking at here are two hatch doors and a th on the coupler and a third hatch. Orientate your positions and dry fit again. So we need the two hatch sections and the coupler. On this one you will see a, a small handle and a larger locking mechanism, circular mechanism. This goes as we orientate on the left hand side of this hatch section. The coupler itself again 
push fit, interference fit, you can turn this with some degree. You don't need any contact cement at all. Along this edge, we just need a very small dab of cement, and likewise, and on the inner edge of this hatch assembly. And apply the hatches. Again, orientate with the hinges on the outside of this rectangular hatch. And our two couple of hatches are going to attach like so. Very, very fiddly. Hence the small amount of contact adhesive that we need. Ideally, I should be using tweezers at this point. And once those are on, this section can be then moved over. We now need to locate the storage boxes for the rear of the turret and the storage box for the rear of the hull along with the two sections of rivet for the bulkhead. You will notice the small indentations on the bulkhead, a small amount of contact adhesive or plastic cement there and again orientate with your drawings these rivet sections taper at one end and it's the tapered end that needs to go on the upper direction of the hull like so again just a small amount of cement as we don't want this pushing and flooding the surface of the model because the cement may as it does melt the plastic as it comes into contact with it the rear storage box can be located very small lugs on the rear here and again a small amount of cement just added orientate with the hatch on the top and attach flush with the upper hull storage boxes and enlarged bulkhead rather with its storage box to the rear of the turret. We have this small section with its three square shapes which locates into this storage box like so and then the two are glued attached with cement to the rear and again orientate with the diagrams and any models or miniatures or pictures that you have. So dry fitting on all the models and all your builds will allow you to orientate the sections and figures that need to be attached and they're their contact points. As for this instance, we need to make sure that this section does not protrude too far above the hull. Allow all your pieces to dry. All that's left are a few stowage options or even more stowage options which can be attached to the superstructure or the front of the hull and any other stowage that you need to attach to make your model unique. Prior to finished assembly, very sharp knife and we just ream the inner of this section 
which will allow a sliding fit for the turret section and all that requires now is to attach the wheel sections again orientate and we have our drive wheels which go to the front of the Sherman like so we locate here on three lugs one two three and likewise one two three and a small amount along the inner section like so and then we attach in the correct direction the wheel sections and then hold in place and indeed you may even need to clamp or again rubber band around the entire model prior to painting or even prior to assembly you may wish to drill out the towing or hoisting hooks that are on the hull section and the turret ideally nothing larger than a one millimeter drill here I've actually used a 0.8 millimeter drill to drill out these sections the gun itself the barrel itself again this vent hole here is a 0.8 drill and nothing larger than a 1mm or 1.5 hole there and likewise the actual barrel section itself a small pin is placed first to create a datum point and then drill out again 1mm but no more than a 1.5mm drill on that position there once all that's finished all that we need to do, to do is add any stowage and there we have a finished Sherman Firefly from the Plastic Soldier Company along with his brother a second Firefly and the M4 A4 Sherman a very accurate interpretation and representation of the Sherman and minimal hindrance or force on the assembly